everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Rachel Hervey and we're going to be talking about health education and a health crisis. I'm thrilled to be joined by three other health educators from across the country um, who are going to share some of their awesome ideas as well. Uh, and they will introduce themselves as we move through this presentation. As I said, my name is Rachel Hervey and I'm coming to you from Ann Arbor, Michigan today, um, where I teach uh, high school health education, physical education, a wellness course, and a sports exercise and health science course as well. I'm the department head there, the lead curriculum developer. Um, I also am an adjunct professor and have the opportunity to uh, travel around the country as an international baccalaureate workshop leader and school site visitor. So like many of you, I wear many hats. Our goals throughout this presentation today are to identify ways to support students and ourselves during this time of crisis, to identify ways to regularly check in with students and continue to build and maintain relationships with them, as well as develop ways to implement curriculum requirements while continuing to support the social and emotional needs of our students. Um, I want to go ahead and just start with some introductions. Um, so if you'll say your name and where you teach, uh, where you're from, and then your pronouns um, so that we are familiar with each other and then all of our viewers become familiar as well. So um, Sure. My name is Charlie Rizzuto. I teach high school health and physical education at Oyster Bay High School. Um, I work as an adjunct professor at Adelphi University and my pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I'm Bree Miller. I'm from a northwest suburb of Chicago, but I currently teach in Carmel, Indiana. I teach sixth grade health and PE, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am Jessica Matheson. I teach at Rockford High School in Rockford, Minnesota, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Awesome. Um, so we're just going to be doing a kind of group discussion today talking about uh, what health education and, and even a little bit of phys ed is looking like in this health crisis that we're in right now um, and talking about what you're doing to support your students and what you're doing to support yourselves um, and ways you're building in your curriculum in meaningful ways um, while kind of keeping that social emotional component at the forefront of what we're doing. Um, so my first question really is, I just wanna know how are you doing and what are you doing to take care of yourself um, right now? I think as teachers, we don't spend enough time thinking about um, what we need to do for ourselves. And we focus so much on our students, which is really important and our well-being is important too. So um, how are things going for you right now? What, what are you doing to practice some self-care for yourself? I'll start. Um, so today I am having a good day. I don't have good days every day. Um, a little background on me. I have a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a four-year-old. And my husband is a healthcare worker. Um, and he works second shift. So I get up and I start working at about six in the morning so that I can put in uh, my eight hours of work each day. My district has been awesome with, we don't have to document or anything. We just have to put in our eight hours. So I start around 6 a.m. so that I can get an hour or two before the kids really get wild and crazy. And I try to let my husband sleep in a bit because he doesn't get home until midnight. Um, and then I just, I get my eight hours in and around two in the afternoon when my husband goes to work, I make a point to go for a walk or a run or a bike ride with the kids every day. Um, and that helps me have good days, mm -hmm. but there are some definitely challenging days with three young kids at home and a husband who is still working out of the home as well. Here, Charlie, what are you guys doing? I do think the days that the weather's nice makes such a huge difference. So you're able to actually get outside and get some exercise because as we know, that makes a world of a difference. Um, I also, I have a two-year-old and then I am just starting my third trimester of pregnancy. So we have one due in July. Um, so starting to get a little uncomfortable. 
Um, my husband is also a healthcare worker, but he works for an insurance company. So he's a nurse, but he works for an insurance company. So he works from home. Um, so the adjustment of both of us being here all day has been very different. Um, I normally sponsor some clubs, so I usually go in super early for work, and then I also coach cross country and track, so I'm usually at work really late. So um, being home all day has been an adjustment, especially mentally, I would say. Um, so I've tried to get back in touch with a lot of hobbies that I enjoy doing. So crafting, I've been sewing like crazy, um, just things like that to kind of still help my mind and take care of myself a little bit on top of a full work day. I've tried to be really aware of the, um, the snowball effect of my thinking sometimes, where one thought that elicits some sort of emotional response rolls into a second thought that elicits that same emotional response and then stress and worry just builds and builds and builds. So, I mean, one of the best examples I could give is um, when we canceled regions, a lot of people were like, that's it, school's over, it's done. And that ended up being true. But at the time, I was like, all right, if I keep thinking in this way, um, I'm going to get stressed, I'm going to get anxious, and I'm not going to um, be um, practicing self-care, right? So I started coming up with reasons as to why the regions could have been canceled that wasn't school is going to be over, right? So maybe they canceled regions so we could be together for the last two weeks of school rather than taking state exams. Or maybe they canceled regions because they didn't think it would be fair to give kids a, um, a regions exam or, or a state test after learning remotely for a period of time. So I've just been very aware of how one thought can roll into others and trying to stop that negative um, emotional spin the best that I could. And I've also been trying to set things to look forward to, right? So just the other day, my son and I, we started looking up um, parts that we would need and ways that we could build a go-kart together over the summer, right? So that's going to be a long-term project, but also that's long-term planning. So like every day we could jump on the computer and like look some stuff up and figure out what we're going to do. And it's, it's just something to look forward to <clears throat> because I feel like with these uncertain times and we don't know how long this is going to last, some of those like things to look forward to have been taken from us, right? So my wife and I were supposed to go to a concert. Um, obviously that's canceled, right? So that was something we would have been looking forward to and now it's gone. So I'm trying to set things to look forward to that don't deal with, you know, close social interactions. And um, that's, been ha that's been helping, you know, like when we sat at the computer yesterday and we brainstormed about building this gold cart that was uplifting and we got excited and we were happy about um, the potential or the possibility of doing this thing over the summer. Um, so addition to the activity, just, just stuff like that. I like what you said about, um, looking forward to things that aren't going to be canceled, right? Like, um, I guess for me, like, that's something I'm struggling with, too, is that I'm the senior dean. And so I oversee graduation. I oversee seniors last day. I oversee all these events that are um, canceled or postponed or, you know, and so that's been something that's kind of been affecting my, I'd say, self-care. But I agree with Bree in that if the weather's nice, my husband and I try and get outside or even just to work out inside. Um, and I think, so I think that that's something that um, has been helpful for me. And also um, two, three of my friends that I work with, we do a virtual happy hour every Friday for like an hour, but it's just nice to be able to like see each other. You know, we spend so much time together during the school year and now we can't. Um, so it's just nice to have that hour to just, decompress and talk about whatever. Um, I think those types of things are really helpful right now too. So um, awesome. So uh, I want to talk about what you're doing to kind of check in with your students on a regular basis. I don't know what types of expectations your school has for you right now. I know um, at my school our goal is to have some type of communication with every student at least once a week, whether that be through a class meeting or the submission of an assignment or something like that. We actually have a document where every single student's name is on it. Um, and then it helps us on the community contact team that we have uh, to go back and see which students we need to reach out to. And we kind of have a tiered system of um, the next, you know, if we don't hear from them for a week, then we email home um, and we include the family. And then the second tier would be um, admin trying to reach out or contact home. Um, just, you know, to make, we're not even worried about 
whether they've turned something in, but it's, um, we want to make sure they're okay. Right. And we want to make sure they have the food they need and that they, you know, have whatever, you know, their internet is okay or the computer is still working or whatever they need. We want to make sure that, um, there, they have that. So that's kind of, um, something that our whole school is doing. Um, Jessica, I know you do a kind of daily check-in. You want to talk about that? Cause that you gave me the idea to do mine. Yeah. So my school has requested that teachers do some type of daily check-in with students. We are a Google suite school. So a lot of teachers on their Google classroom are just putting a simple question. Some days it's a serious, some days it's funny. A lot of times it has nothing to do with their class. Um, so what I decided to do is I have a Google form and I'll share it. I've got a, I just came up with a blank one for teachers. Um, it's a little easier than what I actually use for students. Um, but I have a Google form and it just asks, how did you sleep last night? And it's just on a sliding scale. They just rank it. They have the opportunity of answer if they want, if they want to explain it a little more. Um, I'd say maybe 30% explain that. Um, how is your breakfast or lunch? They can explain that as well. Uh, how are you today? And this is the one that students, this is the one that I look at a lot. Um, just a checkbox type of thing and then a for real, how are you? And that one students can elaborate. And on this one, I get students probably about 60% of the time answering on this question. And then how are things going? And that's a sliding scale as well, a one to five. And anything else you want to tell Mrs. Matheson, I have that. Um, and then I have an uh, option for me to follow up with them. And they can put that. I bought postcards and I hand wrote, I hand selected images for each student and hand wrote postcards to each of my 115 students and mailed them to them. And uh, and that was awesome. It made me feel really connected, although it was a one-way thing. On my daily check-in, a lot of students said thank you. I got emails saying thank you. I got parents saying thank you and that it meant the world. And that was that was really uplifting for me. Mm -hmm. um, our RTI, and I'm going to be honest, I don't even know what that stands for. Um, our RTI committee where we reach out to students who are struggling, who are failing their classes. So I... Um, I personally text a lot of students, again, because of the email issue and everything with that. Um, and with my home life, it's really difficult for me to do Google Meets and have a quiet environment. So I do a lot of texting with students as well. But again, I'll share that daily check-in. It's, the students love it. They, I get real answers from them and they really open up to me on it. And then I'm able to follow up with them as well. Nice. Yeah. I like, like I said, you gave me the idea and I have a similar one that I've done. And then our um, counseling team has one that they've posted on like our school website too. Um, I know for us, we use Canvas. Um, that's our big go-to for everything. And we're on teams. So between wellness, language arts, math, science, and social studies, um, we're in charge of taking attendance for our, our team. So on Canvas, you can click people and it shows all the students' names and it shows the last time they logged in and how long we're on for. So we use that daily and then have like a, a texting group just of all the teachers of, hey, did so-and-so, have, have they turned anything in? It shows they haven't logged on. And kind of like you were saying, Rachel, with like a tiered system, um, once we notice they haven't been on for 48 hours, then we can go to counseling and they'll consider doing like a well check if we've already contacted them and gotten no response. Um, so it kind of then goes on to another process. And then I do a really similar thing to you, Jessica, with the um, Google form. And so for mine, like most of my curriculum is on there, but then the last like three or four questions are um, kind of my way of asking how they're doing, but I try to come up with like different questions that it doesn't necessarily like come out and ask that. So like, like sum up your day with like one emoji and they'll give me one. And I'll sometimes with some of the students, like because luckily we were in school for so long this year, um, 
we know our students really well. So a lot of them, I can kind of look at their answers and be like, okay, they're not doing very well today. Let me go check in with them further. Um, and I have a handful of kids who I check, I probably have six or seven that I check in with daily, whether that be Zooming with them, um, just messaging, because we do have quite a few that are struggling at home right now. Um, so just that little extra contact with them during the day helps. I, I set up a, a, a desk line here um, to use, and I put in Google Classroom for parents or students to call me at any time, um, just so my cell phone number isn't floating around out there. And, um, and I made it a point, and I'm not done yet because it took longer than I thought it was going to. I think I have one class left or something to call every family just to check in and, and see how they're doing. Um, but in terms of Google Classroom, I shared out a, a document called What's Up Zoots. Um, so, you know, kids call me Rizzuto, they call me Zoots, they call me whatever. Um, and it's a blank Google document that every student got a copy of. And it's their opportunity to write to me um, and almost start almost like a pen pal thing. So if they write to me, I always respond to them. And then um, they could always respond to me, right? And we start like um, just a back and forth writing to each other. Um, one thing that I thought of after the fact, not that this, I mean, it didn't happen and not that I think it would happen, but because it is a live document, when they write to me and then I write back, they also have the access to edit what I wrote. So what I started doing was writing to them and then screenshotting what I wrote and then like putting that into the, into the document. Um, not that I thought, again, I, I have good relationships with my kids. I trust them, but um, that like check, like just in case, um, because that is a live document, but that's, that's worked well. Kids have told me, um, you know, they learned, they learned how to drive or, you know, unfortunately maybe there was a sickness of a family member and they just needed a space or an opportunity and a blank canvas to just vent. Um, so they use it for all sorts of things. And, um, for me, like it helps, you know, it's, it's uplifting. I have, um, office hours, like I'm sure a lot of you have, I'll put a link in Google classroom and they could join if they want to. And it's great to see them and talk to them. Um, but when we talk about like access and things of that nature, like, or time or a comfortable space for them to be in that type of environment, some of them, they just want to, they just want to type, they just want to write. And that's a nice outlet for them. And, and it's just great. It's great to read and respond. And I get super excited when they write something and I respond and then they write back, <laughs> you know, so. Do you, for like all of you, what do you feel like? I know for me, I'm seeing the same students kind of be the ones who are consistent with the responses. Um, are you feeling like your efforts are successful? You have 100% participation. I know I don't. Um, My school district, unfortunately, is still trying to figure out. Um, we thought we had everyone with devices. We are not one-to-one. -one. So we had to do Chromebook handout. We had to do Wi-Fi hotspot handout and everything like that. Um, we thought we were there and now we just found that there's a whole chunk of students that were missed. So we're trying to get that again, five weeks in. So that's been tough, but I am experiencing the exact same result as you where I am not getting 100% participation, which I didn't when we were brick and mortar also. So. Um, the hardest part for me is I feel like I take pride in the connections with the kids and I am not, I can tell you, I'm just not doing as well of a job with that virtually than I would in person, um, where, where I have a student that's having a rough day, I can pull them after class and we talk and they get a lot out and they feel better about it. I feel better that I help them. Here, it's like if they don't turn something in and I try to reach out and be like, hey, is everything going okay? And then you don't hear from them. Then it's like that constant panic on your mind. Like, are they doing okay? Um, yeah. So similar results. I would say right now my my participation is is pretty is pretty good, but it's not a hundred percent. A lot of the gaps in participation, unfortunately, are <clears throat> excuse me. Um, some kids that may be having specific struggles, whether it be just getting work done, or you know um, maybe somebody in in the family that um, may be struggling one way or another, and they can't put the time that they need to into their work. Um, so it's, it's definitely not a hundred percent, but, um, recently, one of the things that I've been reminding myself of is, is we hear about, you know, remote instruction and distance learning and, and all of that type of stuff. This is remote emergency instruction, right? It's, we're trying to do the best we can to revamp curriculum. You can't create a curriculum in two weeks. 
Um, that takes a long period of time and we're trying to shift our curriculum on the fly and kids are trying to adjust to receiving information in this way. Um, there's gonna be gaps and there's gonna be struggles and, and there's going to be hurdles. Um, but in terms of my students producing stuff, I feel like, I don't know what week this is for us. I feel like I lost time, a track of time, but it's, it's, start, it's getting better. And I feel like it's been consistently getting better. And like Bree just said, like the, when you build strong relationships with students in person, Bree, you may be doing a fabulous job remotely right now, but you have such a strong connection with the kids when you see them that it just feels like you're not, right? Um, I can't tell you how many days I felt like a failure at the end of the day um because it's so different and it's we're not used to this and even if your district did a tremendous job like how trained are you for that you know what i mean um so i just keep trying to keep that in 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 perspective and every time those little wins happen um that's good and and you know the calls home they always help you know you reach out you talk to a parent you talk to the student themselves you get that connection again and all of a sudden you know you get an assignment turned in um, and trying to also like keep things light and fun. Like my hair is like this because I can't go to the barber. So I put a poll in Google Classroom and I asked my students what I should do with my hair. You know, should I let my wife cut it? Should I cut it myself? Should I let it grow out? And they vote to let my wife cut it. And now this is how I look and it's all their fault, you know? And like just <laughs> to the best of your ability, things like that may, um, Ah, oh, the words escaping me, but but help to fill, form those relationships from from afar. Um, but Bree, I'm sure you're doing a tremendous job, right? But it's if you get that empty feeling because it's different. You know, you can't actually give them a high five at the end of class every day. You know, I have so. I think that's a good point. We're we're kind of calling it crisis learning, and that you know even um, schools that are kind of the alternative version that have online, they're still having to change things too, right? And um, having to keep in mind what our students are going through and not, you know, I think it's a win if we hear from every student as far as the whole school. And I was also thinking about and talking about how we're supporting students. Um, I have been talking with some of my colleagues and we've been noticing that we do have some students who, um, are actually turning more things in and interacting more with their teacher now that it's not in the school building um, than they do in the school building. And um, so now we're kind of talking about like, well, what is going on in the school building that's causing them to not, you know, interact or turn things in, but now that they're at home, um, they're turning things in it and maybe you know some of it um could be that they have a parent sitting next to them the whole time making sure they're doing their work but um even more so i'm noticing that from students who i know because of the living situations that i know they're in that's not the case and they're still being getting more work done now that they're not in the school building um, and i don't know if, if any of you have noticed that at all um, or if that's just kind of something we have started to notice. I mean, I know I have the students who um, are like, I can't learn at home. I can't, it's too busy, it's too loud, it's this or that, I don't have a place to sit, you know, I don't have my own room. Um, but I'm wondering if anybody else is noticing students who might not do as much when they're in the school building, but they're actually doing more now that they're home. Say something? Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I have definitely a handful and similar to you, Rachel, where, you know, I'd love to say that it's a parent that's breathing down their neck to get it done, but just because I know the student, I know that's not the situation. Um, but I almost think like for them right now, those who don't have much to do or, do or maybe who do have a lot of siblings that are at home, it's almost like their time and they're out right now is to be able to focus just on their schoolwork and not have to babysit their siblings or, um, I don't know, going to get nagged at by mom and dad or other things that um, they would be dealing with at home. It's they're actually having time to be able to focus on their schoolwork and maybe not being as distracted as they would be in the classroom, either by friends or the, just not being motivated there. But now that they're home and they're seeing what it would be like to be home all the time with the siblings or whatever, it's motivating them a little bit more to get it done. Yeah, for sure. What are you doing to, you know, keep that social emotional 
component and importance in mind while also trying to get some curriculum done that either you're mandated to get done or you feel is really essential. Like Charlie said, our whole subject is really essential and um, we have to, we're not going to get to all of it either, right? But just two approaches that, that I want to throw out there. One of them with PE is um, I promote obviously activity, right? For wellness. Um, because it's important for them, right? Stress relievers, mental health, emotional health, um, boosting their immune system, all of that type of stuff. But I'm not I'm mandating it. So things that I send home for them to do in PE is not, a movement isn't a necessity for them to complete the task. Um, because I don't want them to feel like exercise, fun, play, and movement is an assignment. I want them to correlate it with wellness. I want them to correlate it with choice. I want them to correlate it with fun. I don't want them to correlate it with something that they have to do, something that's on their to-do list, some sort of task. Just like as a coach, um, you know, the philosophy, kids don't run for punishment because you don't want exercise to be associated with something punitive. Um, so that same philosophy, So, but it's always an option. So inside of my tasks, there'll be opportunities for movement, but they could still complete the task and the learning without having to go and move. And that's also like an equity issue for me as well. Like maybe they don't have the safe space. Maybe they don't have this, maybe they don't have that, um, but they could still complete it. So um, that's kind of where I am at, on the, on the PE side, just trying not to, to mandate movement. But like I said, my kids get on Monday, they get um, a weekly message from me where I lay out the week. Um, Tuesday, they get their task, their assignment, and, the, and their mini lesson. And Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they get a morning message. And in all of those things, there's a fitness component. Like, so for example, their morning message, what it's called is your morning message with a fitness focus. So it's some type of hopefully uplifting motivational thing. Um, and then there's always a fitness focus where I demo a few exercises or give them tips on how to stay active at home. Um, they also have a for you menu, which is a choice menu that they don't have to do because it's for them. And it's just a list of all types of ways that they can be active at home while practice social distancing. So it's constantly being promoted, but it's never mandated because I want them to view physical activity for wellness and not as a mandate. And then in health and in PE as well, um, they are taking inventory of certain things, right? For their overall wellness and things of that nature. We did a, a sleep activity and stuff like that but I'm also delivering instruction through like characters. So for some kids, it doesn't get too personal. Um, and they're analyzing the lives of these fictitious people rather than checking in with themselves. And I've actually had some parents reach out and tell me that they really appreciate that because their children were struggling right now to begin with, but then having assignments that were so personal can all the time, um, was just making it more difficult for them at times. So some of it is personal and there's reflection. Some of it has both of it built in, like the sleep activity I shared out. Um, there were two fictitious people and then their own sleep where they were gonna analyze a little bit. Um, so I feel like a good balance between that was 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 helpful and is helpful for them um, as well. As well. Uh, you know, flexibility, I'm doing something similar where um, we're on a block schedule. So I see my kids, um, three days a week, one week, and then two the next week. Um, and so basically I'm working in two week chunks, right? Cause every two weeks you would basically see them five times. Um, and so I'm giving them like six different activities and asking them, you know, to complete five or four or whatever. And, um, but letting them do it when it works for them. But I, I think that that I have found great success with, um, not requiring like it to be done um, each day, but allowing them to kind of pick and choose when it works for their schedule. Um, Cause we're supposed to have um, something that the students can do each day as far as like a, a learning opportunity, right? And so I'm doing sex ed right now. So um, I give them those six choices and then let them choose the five that they wanna do. Um, so I'm meeting that requirement that I've been given of five assessments or activities and then um, um, I don't know Brie what are you doing as far as middle school the, the three of us teach high school but middle school is a whole different ball game yeah so we're block schedule um, but um, Charlie said with the choice piece so I have like um, a library that I created and I can actually share that um, with you Rachel 
but it has probably like 30 to 40 either like fitness blocks or challenges or like games that they can play with their siblings that have fitness pieces in them. Um, they've actually gotten a lot of use, which has been nice. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from parents and kids who have used it. Um, just kind of that as a choice, but also just encouraging, you know, like the breaks from um, the academics in general. So you're sitting at your computer for three hours, set a timer every 15, 20 minutes, you're up, go do a lap around the house. If, if it is safe to go out, go take the dog for a walk. Um, trying to encourage them to do things that are more foreseeable um, being at home since there are not gyms to use and more realistic than um, all of a sudden becoming a personal trainer from home when that's never what I did before. Um, I think we had a lot of pressure on us. So I've tried to create some more choice for them of even things that maybe they didn't realize were movements um, that they can do from home and trying to encourage a little bit more of like the family bonding for them to do together. And that seems to have helped quite a bit. Um, I've gotten some good feedback from parents, which it's always helpful when you see it from them. So what I decided to do is focus on the student and the student as a whole. So we talk all the time in health class about health triangle. We talk the physical, the mental, emotional, and the social aspects of every single thing we do. So each week, my students journal. I've got a journal for each day. They started off with um, a morning gratitude, three things that they're thankful for. They write a SMART goal for the day. They've got some type of prompt depending on whatever activity we're doing, and then they identify a highlight of their day as well. So they journal every day. And then each week we rotate between a health bingo that I adapted from someone um, as well that I'd be more than willing to share. Lisa Smith um, was awesome to share that. And then I adapted it from her. And then I created a stress management choice board which has been my students all time favorite, And that's something that I will keep once we go back to brick and mortar. And then I've got another activity that I just switch up every three weeks. So we've done some reading, some videos. This week we're going to do a self management activity. And it's all about them. We incorporate physical activity in with it. We incorporate social health reaching out to those who may be living alone, reaching out to someone who may need help, identifying sources of support. And, and that's our focus. Thank you so much for joining us today. On your screen, I have the link where you can find the resources that we were talking about. Uh, and you can also see the contact information um, Please reach out if you have questions, if you want to bounce ideas off of each other. Um, I love being able to work with and collaborate with other teachers. Um, so feel free, email, tweet, box, um, get a hold of me, and we can work together. Thanks again.
Thank you so much for joining us today. On your screen, I have the link where you can find the resources that we were talking about. Uh, and you can also see the contact information. Um, please reach out if you have questions, if you wanna bounce ideas off of each other. Um, I love being able to work with and collaborate with other teachers. Um, so feel free, email, tweet, box, um, get a hold of me and we can work together. Thanks again.